Our transition property is good for things that have a state change like our hover here, but what if you just want to simply play an animation on the page? Well, for that we're going to use the animation property. So let's get set up for that. I'll go ahead and close the last file we were working on and open up the CSS3 animations file, the third file. Pull it up in the browser and of course in my text edit application. And let's see what we've got so far here. We've got two divs on our page, one with a class of container and the other with a class of animation. And that has our sample text in it. We can see they both have styles already set up up here that are giving them the basic look that we're seeing here in the browser. We can actually animate just about any property in our styles here. But for our first example, let's just pick out the background color, which starts out at red. What we want to do first is define an animation where the background color changes. I'm going to go up to the top of our style block here, and I'm going to add in a special keyword for defining animations. We use at keyframes. And we give our animation set a name. I'm going to call this rainbow background. Now I'm going to set up some grouping braces, and we'll define our animation inside of them. There's a couple ways you can do it, but the easiest way to start is by using from and to. We'll start off with from, and this is where our animation will start. I'll add some grouping braces for that. And inside those, we'll add the style we want to start our animation with, which is a background color of red. Next, we'll specify the end of the animation by using the keyword to. To save a little typing, I'm just going to copy the first line, paste it in, and we'll change our keyword to to, which signals the end of the animation, and let's just change the background color to blue. Now, this would define an animation for any browser that accepted the keyframes property as is, but as you might have guessed, just like the other new CSS3 properties, this one you're probably going to need to use a prefix to get each of the browsers to work. So, since I'm setting this up for my Firefox browser, I'm going to copy my animation definition here for starters. I'll paste it down below, and let's add the MOZ prefix. Right after the at sign, I'll add in dash, MOZ, dash, and then keyframes. And we'll have the same definition here. Now we've defined our animation, but we need to bind it to some other property. Of course, I'm going to go down to the elements that have my anim class here. And what I'll do is add a line right at the beginning of the style definition and we'll use the animation property. I need to specify the name of the animation, which is rainbow background. And just like our transition property, I need to specify a duration as well. So let's set it up for something like five seconds. Now, once again, the animation property isn't supported by most of our browsers yet. So to set this up for my Firefox browser, I'm just gonna add the MOZ prefix. I'll copy that line paste it down below, and at the beginning we'll add dash MOZ dash. Now we're ready to try it out. Let's save our changes, and we'll go out and refresh the page. Now you can see that our animated button slowly changed from red to blue, and showed all the colors in between. And when the animation was finished, it just flipped back to the stationary style which was red. Now you might have noticed an animation from red to blue isn't exactly a rainbow. We're going to need more steps than that. So let's go make a change to our animation definition. Instead of using the from to, which only gives me two steps in my animation, the beginning and the end, we can use percent values to indicate stopping points for each one of our keyframes. So let me change the beginning one from from to 0%. Now we can have as many of these stops as we want, but we always need a beginning and an end. For instance, I'm going to change this one from the background color blue at the end to the middle by making it 50%. And let me copy the beginning one, and I'll just paste it here at the end and make it 100%. Now this would create an animation that would start at red, at the middle of the animation it would be blue, and then it would go back to red again. For fun, let's just add a couple more colors because we want a rainbow. I'll paste that line in again so we can modify it, and we'll just put this in the middle. I'll make that 25%, and we'll make the background color, let's say, yellow. And let's add another one in here in the middle that will change the color to green. 
We don't have to have them as even steps. I'm going to make this 90%, which means we'll have a big step of time between 50 and 90, and a very short step of time between 90 and 100. I'll change the color to green. And since we should have the same definition for all of our prefixes, I'm going to copy these new keyframe steps, and let's just paste them into the block for our normal keyframes property. Now let's see how that looks. We'll save our changes. We'll go back out and refresh the page. And now we can see it goes to yellow, blue, then green, and finally red. And you might even notice that the step from blue to green is very slow, but the last step from green to red is very fast. Just like in the transition property, we can animate more than one style value. All we need to do is add them into our keyframes. Notice that our anim class includes a style definition of position absolute, and it's inside of a container which is set to position relative. So we should be able to move this element around that container. Let me go set the different properties that would do that up in our keyframes. I'll just go right to the end of our background color definition set. And for the first one, I'm going to specify a position of left at zero pixels and top at zero pixels. That'll start my element off where it is, at the top left corner of the div. Now let me copy that. And I'll paste it at the end of our other keyframes, and we'll just change the values. I want my element to move over to the side here. So I'll set the left here at 300 pixels, and leave the top at zero. Then I want it to move from top to bottom. So for the next one, I'll set left and top to 300. Then I want it to start moving backwards here. So we'll set left to zero once again and keep top at 300. And finally, I want it to end up back where it started, which is at zero and zero. Now you can see we've got a lot of properties going on here. Let's make sure that we copy all these keyframes into our other design elements for the Mozilla browsers. We'll paste that in there into our keyframes and save our changes. And let's see what kind of animation we have now. Now you can see the rainbow animation is actually timed with the movement of our object all the way around the frame. Like the transition property, we can add on a couple of optional settings as well, just to change how our animation plays back. You can see down here where we bind the animation, we just specify the name of the keyframe set and the duration, but we can also add parameters for the timing function and any delays. I'll go here at the end, and let's try the timing function ease again. That kind of adds a nice beginning and ending to each one of the animation segments. And I'll just add in a one second delay. Of course, we'll do it to both of our definitions or the others if you're using some other prefixes as well. We'll add the ease and the one second delay. Save our changes and let's see how that looks. There we can see it play back and each one of the animation movements kind of has a soft edge to it. Now we've got a couple of additional parameters we can try out. The first one specifies a number of repeats. The default is one, and that's why currently our animation only plays through once. Let's add in the number three, and that'll let our animation play through three times. I'll set it up for both of our definitions, and I'm gonna make it run a little bit faster here, so I'm gonna set it down to three seconds for both as well. Let's save, and we'll refresh our page. Now you can see it's playing a little faster, but there was also a one second delay right at the very beginning of the animation. And you can see it playing through completely three times before it stops. If you want something to play on forever, just use the keyword infinite. You just type it right on out. Now I wanna leave mine at three, but I wanna show you the one last property and that is, we can set how the animation will play back when it repeats. The default is normal playback, so it just plays the animation through three times. But I'm gonna add in the keyword of alternate, and that will make it play forwards, then backwards, and then forwards again, alternating each time. We'll add it into both of our style definitions, save our change, and let's see what that looks like. There we had our one second delay at the beginning, it plays through the first time, then it plays backwards, 
and finally forwards again, completing the three times we told it to play.